And welcome to our Father's house as we celebrate the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. A special welcome to all visitors and to those who have recently joined our parish family. The readings today begin on page 73 in the Missal in your pew. Our presider this evening is Father Brian. Before we begin our celebration this evening, let's stand and greet those around us as you are comfortable. Our opening hymn is number 420, All Are Welcome, number 420. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be always with you. And with your spirit. Hello. Hello. Nice to see all of you today as we gather here, mask and unmask, cold and warm. We come together to pray and call upon God's blessings on us as his people. Our readings today probably are some of the most difficult for us to listen to and to put into practice from the time of King David to the time of Jesus and to all of us here as well. So listen carefully to the words that come to us and challenge us at the very core of who you and I really are. And so as we prepare to pray today, we also place ourselves in the presence of our loving God, mindful of our failings and our day-to-day -day living. Let us humbly ask for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are with us today in word and sacrament for our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you give us the example of your life, your death, and resurrection that we too can follow you. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you truly are the way, the truth, and the life for salvation for all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mighty God, have mercy on your people. Forgive us all of our sins. Bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless. King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten. 
infant Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you'll take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You'll take away the sins of the world, receive our Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out both in word and deed that which is pleasing to you. We pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. In those days, Saul went down to the desert of Ziph with 3,000 picked men of Israel to search for David in the desert of Ziph. So David and Abishai went among Saul's soldiers at, by night and found Saul lying asleep within the barricade with his spear thrust into the ground at his head and Abner and his men sleeping around him. Abishai whispered to David, God has delivered your enemy into your grasp this day. Let me nail him to the ground with one thrust of the spear. I will not need a second thrust. But David said to Abishai, do not harm him, for who can lay hands on the Lord's anointed and remain unpunished? So David took the spear and the water jug from their place at Saul's head, and they got away without anyone seeing or knowing or awakening. All remained asleep because the Lord had put them into a deep slumber. Going across to an opposite slope, David stood on a remote hilltop at a great distance from Abner, son of Ner, at the, and the troops. He said, Here's the king's spear. Let an attendant come over to get it. The Lord will reward each man for his justice and faithfulness. Today the Lord delivered you into my grasp. I would not harm the Lord's anointed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. 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 the Lord, all my soul, and all my being, bless his name. Bless the Lord, and forget not his benefit. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Mercy 
merciful, merciful, and gracious is our God. Slow to anger, abounding in kindness. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. But the spiritual was not first, rather the natural and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, earthly, the second man from heaven. As was the earthly one, so also are the earthly. And as is the heavenly one, so also are the heavenly. Just as we have become the image of the earthly one, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly one. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. says the Lord love one another as I have loved you the Lord be with you and with, with your, your spirit, spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, To you who hear I say, Love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. To the person who strikes you on one cheek, offer the other as well. And from the person who takes your cloak, do not withhold even your tunic. Give to everyone who asks of you. And from the one who takes what is yours, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. If you lend money to those from whom you expect re repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and get back the same amount. But rather, love your enemies and do good to them and lend expecting nothing back then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he himself is kind to, to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Stop judging, and you will not be judged. Stop con condemning, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and gifts will be given to you. A good measure, packed together, shaken down, and overflowing, will be poured into your lap. For the measure with which you measure will, be re will in return be measured out to you. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. On this very cold and frigid February day, there is always something to be grateful for. Whether it's our homes or our families, those we love, those who love us. And especially this afternoon, I want to say it makes a very uh, cold day even better for me personally, not only to be here back at St. Irenaeus, but also today at this Mass. Um, we're celebrating wonderful, wonderful anniversary between our friends Alex and Lorraine Bull, who are celebrating 70 years of marriage today. I said that, 70, not 70. Congratulations to both of you. Um, Alex and Lorraine, last evening I had dinner with a couple whose wedding I'm going to witness in June, and we were talking about all the things of, you know, preparation and married life, and they're a little hesitant, of course, as they get excited to enter their marriage. I, I wish I would have uh, been able to have you at dinner with us because you would have been the best marriage preparation uh, that they could possibly have asked for, uh, that you have witnessed your love for each other for 70 years. And again, congratulations and God's blessings on you and your family who are here with you uh, for more and more years to come. Alex, you got a seat of honor right in the main aisle today too, so that's, that's a very special thing as well. Um, those of you who have or are currently raising kids, I don't have to stand here and, and tell you how difficult and challenging that can be. First of all, why would it take a celibate priest to tell people what it's like who are married, how difficult it is to raise children? You know that already. And um, so oftentimes I see and experience how it works with families and how sometimes it can be very difficult. Not long ago, uh, I was talking to a family that I have known for some years. I witnessed their marriage years ago and now their children are in um, middle school and almost in senior high. And they came to the decision as husband and wife not long ago that they were going to remove their children from the school they were in and move them to another school. Um, they had saved and really sacrificed a great deal to put their kids in this particular school, a very well-known uh, private school, a uh, very expensive school, and the kids no doubt would get a great and exceptional education. But what the family was telling me is they were seeing things come out in their kids that they really weren't real happy with. Um, there seemed to be a great spirit of competition at this school. There seemed to be a great spirit of me first over other things in school. Um, it is not a religious school. The kids were getting proper education, of course, and from their family. But just the things that they were hearing coming out of them, anxiety as well experiencing, after a lot of thought, they said, this is not what we want. This is not who we are as a family. We want our kids, they were telling me, to be able to be accepting of everyone, to be able to help those that maybe need a little more help and not constantly fighting as to who's gonna have the highest grade point average. And so they made this decision and it seems to be working. But I was so, in a sense, touched by what was behind all this. What they were trying to teach their kids is, this is not who we are. As a family, this is not what we do. We believe as a family that this is how you teach, this is how you work with other people, this is how you live. I think we all remember, we'd come home sometimes and say, well, you know, such and such kids down the street are doing this. And I'm sure your answer would be the same I received also is, well, that's nice, but that's not how we live as a family. And that's in essence what this couple was doing to their kids. This is not the fabric of who they were as a family and they had to make a change. Interesting, if we take that story and we listen to the readings today, there's some, again, very powerful readings that sometimes are difficult. In that first reading we hear from the Old Testament, we hear about how um, David could have rightfully killed Saul, but he chose not to. An interesting story because in most, many Old Testament stories, we hear of great bloody conflicts. It's not uh, unusual at all. 
And then in the gospel, we hear Jesus, in a sense, talking to his disciples, his listeners, much like this family, I think, was talking to their kids. He was saying, if you are going to be of my thinking, this is how you need to act. This is what you need to do. The people, Jesus' disciples, of course, would come back and say, but this is what it was taught. Jesus' response would simply be that, but that's not who we are in essence. In essence, we are different. And if you want to be a follower of mine, this is how you live. By being kind, by being forgiving, by being generous, by being generous, not hoping to be repaid. All those things that really would sound so unusual. But Jesus was renewing them saying, but if you are going to be of my mindset, this is how you need to live. Will it be difficult? Without a doubt. Will there be times you'll beat your head against the wall? Without a doubt. But nonetheless, we saw that actually, actually happen in the life of Jesus himself. But his mindset was such, this is what we must do if we are to usher in the kingdom of God. You know, thinking is, I'm sure you have seen as well, if you watched any of the Olympics over the last week, um, they're always marvels for me to watch what the human body is able to do, especially the body of 20-year-olds that can bend and twist and fly in the air um, like we wouldn't even dare to think of doing anymore. And I was watching some of the figure skating the other night, and uh, again, to me, sometimes it's almost laughable when you see how those ice skaters are able to pick up their leg and place it over their head and hang on to their skate, all the while looking graceful doing that too. Can only imagine, if you want to try that sometime, what would happen. But yet, I'm sure that as those athletes are trained, they too have to adjust their mindset. Their entire mindset must be that I need to concentrate and do the absolute best that I can. If you would go into something like those Olympics we've seen with a half-hearted attitude, that maybe I'll be okay, well, I'll do my darndest, but maybe if I won't, it's okay, you would never succeed. They would never come near the platform. But what we have been able to witness are so many wonderful things. First of all, what we can do as human beings, of how we can be trained, how our minds can be so set on doing something, whether it's skating or following Jesus Christ, whatever, what we can accomplish is beyond comprehension. God has blessed us so very much. And so as we pray today and listen to these words, they really shouldn't be words we just shake off and say, that's for somebody else. That's for someone else more religious. I don't have the ability to forgive my family. I don't have the, uh, the ability to let a grudge go that maybe that's been going on for a long time. I don't have the ability to give something to someone and not expect repayment, maybe even with interest. But yet, if we dare gather week in and week out and call ourselves disciples of the Lord, we do need to help change our attitude, our focus of what our life is really all about. So let us pray today in our liturgy as we give thanks to God for giving us that challenge over and over again to be people of goodness, to be people of Jesus Christ. And once it becomes in the very fiber of our being of doing this, it probably will get a little easier for us. There will be days of suffering, but the greatest promise of all is that the Lord will not forsake us. That if we're down and out, Jesus will be there. If we're hurt by those that to hurt us, Jesus will be there. And just like in a few moments when we bring the bread and wine to the altar, Jesus will be here for us now and always. As we gather here today to focus our eyes on the Lord who calls us to allow him to be the very center of our heart, 
We also gather to profess what we believe is God's family. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With grateful hearts as God's family, let us now offer our intentions in all of our prayers. For the Archdiocese of Detroit, may an outpouring of the Holy Spirit bring new life and vigor to our parishes and inspire us to witness the gospel joyfully and boldly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For peace in our troubled world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the grace this week to be kind and forgiving with those we find difficult to interact with, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the guests of Hope Adult Shelter who will be served by our parish this upcoming week, may they be nourished, comforted, and sustained through the loving outreach of Christ-filled disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer for an end to homelessness in our communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose faith is being tested due to illness, broken relationships, or other life circumstances, may God's love and compassion bring them consolation and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have passed into eternal life, May they rest in peace in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those we remember in a special way at this Mass, the 70th wedding anniversary of Lorraine and Alexander Bull, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Many people request our prayerful support at Mass those who are ill and those who are having special difficulties at this time, for those who are healing from surgery. We ask the Lord to give them peace and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your Son Jesus indeed challenges us to the very core of who we are. May we come to follow him in our life. May he be the focus of all that we do. Accept these prayers and the needs we bring to you today. And Almighty God, in your love for us, grant these intentions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 511, drawn by his word, number 511.
become disciples, baptize the people of God. He filled their hearts with his love, making them heralds of a new world. My friends, pray that our offering now will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands. <clears throat> the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church, as we celebrate your mysteries, almighty God, with the observance that is your due, with humbleness we ask you that what we offer on this altar in your majesty may profit us for salvation. We offer this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right. It is just. It is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, Jesus humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And so now, with all the saints, all the angels in heaven, here in this holy place, we lift our voices as your people, sharing their unending hymn of glory. For you are indeed holy, O Lord, you are the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by once again sending down the power of your divine spirit upon them like the morning dewfall, that they will now become for all of us here the very body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. For at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He then broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we now celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, indeed we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be here today in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. 
together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, with all bishops, clergy, religious, all of your holy people. Almighty God, we also ask you to remember our own brothers and sisters, our family members, fellow parishioners and friends who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection. Those who have died in your mercy, Lord, welcome them all into the light of your face. And have mercy upon all of us here, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Joseph, her husband, the apostles, the martyrs, with Irenaeus, our patron, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages. May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. It is with great faith and confidence as God's people that we stand now and pray in the words our Savior has given to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from and deliver us lord we pray from everything that is evil graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom, kingdom the power and the glory are yours lord jesus christ you said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you Look not in our sin, but rather on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Thank you. We... <laughs> Sorry. For we know this, to be Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, he who has taken away the sin of the world. Happy and blessed are we who have been called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe unto life everlasting. Amen.
Our communion hymn is number 369. Beautiful is your love. Number 369. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of this Eucharist and how we live this coming week in serving you through one another. We offer this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There are a few announcements before we conclude today. It is not too early to already talk about the season of Lent. Lenten daily devotional booklets are available in the gathering area this weekend. A reminder that Lent begins Ash Wednesday, March the 2nd. Parents, mentors, and teachers. Dr. Tim Hogan will be coming to St. Irenaeus Sunday, March 6th at 1 o'clock. 
with tools to address the unprecedented challenges created by our culture of smartphones and social media. He will offer strategies for staying spiritually rooted, addressing mental health challenges, and parenting in today's climate. Please see the bulletin for further details. A reminder about um, Ash Wednesday coming up, I was conversing with Father Jerry, who is now probably on his way back here from the warm south, that he is uh, coming back and I am taking off. And uh, I was telling him, he asked something about Ash Wednesday. I said, oh no, my friend. I said, this will be the first year in 43 years that I'm going to get ashes and not give them. <laughs> first time in 43 years. So it'll be an interesting time indeed. I will pray for all of you, certainly. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God's blessings be with each of us as we depart today. May God give us safety in our travels. May God give us good health and strong faith with each other. Let us go now with the blessings of our God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is number 739. Lead me, Lord, number 739. shall be satisfied.